This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all kinds of Photoshop and Lightroom goodness, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here. We're continuing our exploration of 3D in Photoshop this week, and we'll be building on the techniques that we've been exploring over the past few weeks. We'll be creating the 3D extrusion using text, adding some materials and a few other little tricks that we'll pick up along the way. And this is the finished composite that we'll be building. So let's go ahead and start with the original file. And here we've got a background image and I've set the word earth in some interesting looking text. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the background off for now just so that it's not a distraction to us. Now with the Earth layer selected, I'm simply going to go to 3D and choose New Extrusion from Selected Layer. Now if you're not already in the 3D workspace, Photoshop may ask you to switch to the 3D workspace, and I recommend that you go ahead and do that. In this case, we've got the 3D panel showing and the Properties panel showing. And we've got our text here, and we can spin this text around in 3D like so by using the Move tool with the option set to the 3D Rotate Mode. So we'll just move this text around a little bit so that we can see it. And what we want to do is we want to give this text a little more gritty of an appearance. So we started with the original color and when we extruded the text we got that color carried through. It's sort of a sandy brownish color. But we want to add some texture and really make this text look gritty and ancient. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the earth front inflation material and that is the material that covers the front of the text. With the inflation material selected we can modify any of the parameters here including the original color that we started with. But what we really want to focus on in this case is the bump setting. The bump setting will allow us to actually simulate some surface texture. And what we're going to do here is actually add a texture that I have previously saved over here in another file. And what I'm going to do is select all with Command A or Control A, and then Command C or Control C to copy this to the clipboard. With this image on the clipboard, I'm going to go back here and with my front inflation material selected, I'll choose the folder icon here next to the bump setting and choose new texture. With the image on the clipboard, the width and height will be preset to the dimensions of the clipboard. So we can click OK. Now we have a texture, but it has nothing on it. So what we'll want to do is edit the texture. And again, we get that by clicking right here on the icon in the Properties panel. Now here's our texture, and we're going to go ahead and just press Command-V to paste the image from the clipboard into our texture material. And then we'll hit Command-S or Control-S to save that. And then we can close out of this file. And now we see that the texture is applied as a bump map to the front of our text. Now we want to play with this a little bit more, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to use the zoom tool and I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this text so you can see what's going on. In fact, we'll just pan over a little bit. Now we want to add a little bit of a bevel on the front edge. And in order to do that, we'll pick the earth text here in the 3D panel. And then we'll go to the third icon over which is the cap setting. And using this setting, we can adjust the width of the bevel simply by dragging this slider. And you can see what's happening here. Recall that if you're using the move tool, right now we have the zoom tool active. If we go to the move tool, we get this heads up display right on the screen and we can actually drag here to adjust the bevel width if we want. But that looks pretty good right there. About 14 or 15 percent. Now what we'd like to do is transfer this material over to the other parts of the object. 
So we have the front inflation material with this nice cracked looking texture. Then we've got the bevel material here with no texture. And then we've got the extrusion material all the way around with no texture. Now what we could do is go here to the front inflation material and we could simply click this down arrow here and click this gear icon and save our materials. And that would be good if we've created a material and we spent a while creating it and we're going to reuse it again in the future. In this case, we've just got a simple material and we want to copy it over to some of the other parts of this 3D object. So rather than go through all the trouble of saving and loading materials, we can go over here to the eyedropper icon and choose the 3D material eyedropper tool. With this tool selected, we can hover over the 3D material on the front of our object and we can click on it and we'll say load selected. Now we can position the eyedropper over the other parts of the 3D object and hold down the option key and the cursor will change to a paint bucket. Now when we click, it applies that material to the bevel. Likewise, if we hover over the extrusion material and again with the option key or the alt key pressed, we click and it applies the material there as well. Now you may notice a slight problem with the extrusion portion of the material in that the scale is not looking quite right. And we can modify that as well. What we're going to do is choose the extrusion material in the 3D panel. And then when we click on the icon next to the bump setting here, we'll choose Edit UV Properties. This will allow us to actually scale the texture and you'll have to play around with this a little bit to get something that's right. But I've experimented and found that 300% for the U scale and 5% for the V scale seem to give me a reasonable result. So we'll enter that in, we'll click OK. And then we'll double click the hand tool to see the whole image again. Now at this point, we're ready to bring the background in. So let's move these panels out of the way. And we'll turn the background on. Now what we'll want to do is switch back to the move tool and get this scene somewhat into position. Now we won't be able to get it exactly right, but we can move it around approximately into the location that we want. To put it. Now if you remember from the original image, we had the text sort of jumbled around. So how do we do that? Well once again with the earth layer selected and in fact in the 3D panel with the earth text as our current selection, we'll go to the 3D menu and we'll choose split extrusion. We'll get a warning. We'll click OK. Now if we take a quick look at our 3D panel once again, we can see that where we had a single 3D mesh object for the word Earth, we now have separate meshes for each letter in the word. So that means we can actually click on each individual one of these and we can move it around independently of the others. So we'll just click, choose, and reposition and get these things set up the way that we'd like them to be. Don't forget that you can actually click on the Axis tool to interact directly with the object, or you can click out here in space, and in that case you're using the capabilities of the Move tool that you've got selected. Again, I'm just clicking the letters, dragging them around, and positioning them in an interesting way so that they look sort of disheveled and jumbled here on the hillside. 
I think that's pretty good. Now for the finishing touch, what we're going to do is to go to the earth layer in the layers panel, which is our 3D layer, and we're going to add a layer mask. And with the layer mask selected, we're going to switch to the brush tool, and I'm going to use just a round black brush, and I'm going to go ahead initially and set the hardness to 100%. And then we'll just go in here and we'll paint away some of this object so that it's hidden by part of what was the background image. And this will sort of blend it into the background. So I'm just doing a rough job at this point, just trying to get some feel for how this is going to look. And then we can change the size of the brush, we can fiddle around with it, and we can soften the brush as well at this point. So let's go back here. We'll make the brush soft, and we'll go back and soften up just a little bit on these edges here just to take some of the pixely rough edge off. And there we have it. We have 3D text that's been given an interesting material, been placed onto a 2D image, and blend it in using a layer mask to make it look as though it's integrated right into the scene. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom tutorials and related information there. Or you can follow me at mhoffman2001 on Twitter, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching today, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.